and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino inviting you to another adventure concerning the Pocket 386 modern made retro computer. So <laughs> this is basically a device which is made in modern times yet features an AMD 386 processor, so are compatible to the Intel 8386, has eight megabyte, not gigabyte of RAM, and its entire hard disk is here in a two gigabyte compact flash card. And these devices, when sold, are delivered either with Windows 3.11 for work groups or Windows 95. But of course, what you're seeing is not Windows. Indeed, for the connoisseurs among you, this is OS2 Warp 3. And the topic of today's video indeed is how to get OS2 Warp 3 onto your Pocket 386. And as you shall see in the following moments, this is exceedingly simple. If you're having a Linux workstation where too you can outsource a lot of the work, then you can, you know, take out the compact flash card from here, put it into a card reader and connect this to your Linux workstation. On your Linux workstation, you can do a virtual installation of OS2 and then simply dump the image to the physical compact flash card and then take out the compact flash card, insert it here and boot the machine. And how to do exactly all these things you shall see now. In the following, I shall detail the exact steps in order to place OS2 onto the Pocket 386. The instructions, however, will be focusing on Linux, for that is what I am having available. And of course, you are encouraged to keep a critical view on the whole process and if you come up with some improvements or suggestions or have some other critique then you're highly welcome to share it in the comments. So before you can install a thing you obviously you'll have to have it and if you need virtual media for OS2 then on the site winworldpc.com you may find images for a couple of versions and I believe the most sensible one for our purposes is version 3. For version 2 had the way I understand it even worse RAM requirements and that 3 actually improved RAM requirements over 2 and RAM being our most important resource it makes therefore no sense to go to 2. One is completely ancient so doesn't really resemble what people think when they think of OS2. And 4, unfortunately, raises, at least according to the site, the system requirements beyond what we have available. It wants a 486 and 12 megabytes of RAM. We are having neither. But 3 should be working well enough. And now, looking at what is offered, there are all sorts of versions below, of course, and you may pick whatever you wish, but what I did pick and what did work for me was this one, IBM OS2 Warp 3 Connect Blue Spine version. The Blue Spine version is explained to have Windows 3.1 files, and I thought having some emulation layer included might be useful. Now, once you have obtained that archive and unarchive it, you will find a couple of files. I have here a couple more, but the most important files are the boot floppies directory as well as the installation ISO. There's also a bonus pack ISO, but I haven't actually installed anything from it. I was just happy to go ahead with the installation ISO. All right, assuming that you have obtained OS2 and unarchived it, we will be using Kemu in order to install the whole affair. And afterwards, we will be simply imaging that image file onto the physical disk. 
and simply boot it in the physical machine. And that is how the Pocket 386 is going to receive an OS2 installation of admittedly modest size. I did not want to go for the full 2 GB because I tell you certain segments of the installation otherwise take unbearably long. A 2 GB disk is unrealistic for the time anyway. And having a smaller disk also allows you to DD it to something smaller that you may be having around, lying around. So that's what we will be doing. And here with Camu IMG Create, that is how you are creating a 240 megabyte virtual hard disk for the installation in Camu. And the specific Camu command line, like this is really just all one line, looks like this. We are starting Camu system I386. So this is the 32-bit version, not the X64 one. With 16 megabytes of RAM, we don't need that, but it maybe it makes things faster a bit. Drive, the drive shall be the file we just created, OS2IMG, and its format shall be a RAW. The machine is an ISA PC, so ISA architecture, which indeed is what we're having in the Pocket 386. The CPU is a 486, simply because my copy of Camu doesn't offer a 386. The CD-ROM is the installation ISO, the one I mentioned before from the archive we are getting. And the boot floppy is the first disk, like disk zero image, and we are indeed booting from it. So this B and this OOT A belong together for a boot A. And if I now press enter, then you see that the system is attempting to boot from the first floppy. And that is perhaps also <laughs> a moment for us to get acquainted with the Camu monitor for there is a sort of command line interface in which you can make adjustments to a running virtual machine here OS2 is starting and in particular we can change their diskettes so insert OS2 diskette 1 so we just did diskette 0 and now we're pressing Control alt 2 in order to get to the monitor Control alt 1 brings us here in full view of the installation window like what is normally seen on the physical machine and Control alt 2 the number 2 not F2 is getting us to the camo monitor where we can say change floppy 0 here the names are a little bit less standard than what you may be used to although of course very sensible and make it boot floppies forward slash disk one dot image pressing enter and control alt one you see that os2 warp is already starting oopsie uh, fortunately not the entire window seems to be visible doesn't matter maybe I can even maximize it can I go full for full screen okay oh this is wonderful is this being recorded that's a good question oh yes looks like it is control alt F then very good so now I'm pressing just enter and now it is asking us do we want to have an easy or an advanced installation you can comfortably pick your easy installation and now the whole thing will restart so it just immediately handled the partitioning but now needs a reboot in order to have the system recognize that change and it demands that we remove the diskette from drive A which is diskette 1 and insert installation diskette which is drive 0 into drive A so control alt 2 and then we will be inserting now diskette 0 
Control Alt 1 and pressing Enter. So now again we have to do the same game, Control Alt 2 and change back to Floppy 1 and Control Alt 1 to see OS2 warp start. Start installation at least. The whole thing does take its sweet time, I tell you that much. Okay, uh, congratulations on your purchase, etc, etc. Okay, just enter. It is interesting to see how it copies from the diskettes files, although we are not actually using diskettes, but that is what this <laughs> installation CD-ROM really saves us from, having to play disk jockey. Ah, yes, that, that is sweet. See on the lower corner of the screen, there are these two slashes moving forward and backward. But it shouldn't freeze. Like that, what this warning against shouldn't happen. It should just stop. Yeah, remove the diskette and press enter to the start the workstation to continue the installation. Okay, then control alt 2 and eject floppy zero control alt one press enter <coughs> and it first tries to boot from the floppy but can't because we removed it and god knows why but this whole thing does not seem yeah caught it again <laughs> was not seemingly caught in the full screen mode of camu but now things look better Yeah, <sighs> control alt F, control alt F, and unfortunately it does not seem that it got my mouse. I don't know why. Control alt G, yeah, okay, and if I'm here, okay, now it has my mouse. Control alt G, control alt G, control alt F, okay, finally, I'm properly caught. Now, in this screen, the only change I actually made was to the CD-ROM device, because somehow in the past I had an issue with that. The mouse I did not change, PS2 was fine. Unfortunately, the internal mouse did not seem to work. Still, I'm going to keep it at PS2 in case I really get a physical mouse. Interesting, however, was the CD-ROM, which should not be other. But if we press here the CD-ROM, exactly. Here, I advise you to pick non-listed IDE CD-ROM. Okay, that's the only change. Printer, I picked no printers attached, no PCM CIA support, and so on and so forth. So forth. Multimedia device support, that might be actually interesting. What have we got here? I haven't done that yet, so this is now new territory. 
Well, what shall we be going for? Let's just go for Sound Blaster. I don't know. Hopefully. We will also maybe take Sound Blaster 16. Add. And I hope that that's going to be enough. Okay. And simply. Okay, now. Do not install a default printer. And do we want to install networking support? I said yes. You might as well say no, but the point is why then install OS2 OS2 at all, right? Peer to peer though, when are you next time going to meet an OS2 peer? Completely unlikely. We don't need novel netware, but yes, we do want TCP IP. Which adapter? Well, you can go either with no adapter or you can pick something that you will find likely obtaining. I will first, for the time being, go with no adapter. Okay. And this is now what will be installed. OS2 Warp version 3 plus the IBM internet connection and TCP IP networking. And now I can say install. And that is going to take now its sweet time. Let's adjust the viewport again. Control Alt F, Control Alt F. Again, missing things from the config sys file, like things which don't work out. Just press Enter, don't you worry. All will boot just fine in a moment. Control Alt F, Control Alt F. <laughs> Here's some search in progress. I don't need anything. Ah, no, it is needing to find its program. So just let it do that. It is adding all sorts of things to some sort of internal database of whatever nature. Yeah, but now we are having a fully installed OS 2, the way I judge it. Looking at the Windows programs, what have we got? Program Manager. Sure. Like, why not? <laughs> and this is super cute because you see this is something like a little Windows running in parallel to your OS 2 system. There's something I haven't done before. What is WinOS 2 setup? Let's try that. Network, no network installed. Like, I know. 
Ah, but I can set up applications, search for an application or ask you to specify an application. Okay, so this must be what happens when you are wishing to set up a Windows program. Okay, nice to know. Yes, it, it may please end that. Nice. And let's close that. Now there is this little folder here. It will later be in the way. I'm going to show you how to move things. You say pick up and then you want it somewhere and then you say drop and then it went away. Whereas this entire thing which we will also want to shift later can be just moved with the mouse. And that's pretty much it. We now have a fully working OS2 system. Like if we click here on this icon twice, OS2 system, then we're seeing, yeah, it's folders and, and things. We can go to productivity and, you know, it seems to have a very cute enhanced editor that we can try out. And yeah, that's it. The next step will be placing that system into the real hard disk. So I'm now going to say shut down. Okay. And the system is off. So control alt F in order to return to Camu. Control alt G to leave Camu. And closing Camu. So our next step is to put it on the disk. And now having quit Camu, this is the command on my Ubuntu system in order to write the image onto a compact flashcard. Beware to either use a different compact flashcard than the one where your Windows installation is on, or to have certainly a working backup of that Windows installation, because whatever was on that card after I now press enter will be completely annihilated. Yeah, I don't know why, but the status is equal to progress is not really working for me. And now this is just going to take forever, but once it's done, I'm going to remove the card, and then I'm going to insert it in the machine, and then I'm going to boot from it and demonstrate to you, in physical reality, that what we have been exercising in the virtual space. See you then. In the immortal words of Morpheus, welcome to the real world. So you, you see just the traces of what was done. Here is the SD card reader. Here is the finish of the DD command I showed you before. Here in front of us is the Pocket 386. And this is the compact flash card. Inserting it and pressing the button. Let me now increase perchance a bit the screen so you can follow along the physical developments. OS2 booting on the Pocket 386. Yeah. Now comes again this part where if some configuration doesn't quite work, it requires you to press enter. It's not a big tragedy, but as you saw, I have no external mouse attached, the internal one. Maybe I should have turned on now. I don't know. Maybe I should have turned it on. Who knows? Maybe it would have worked then. Now likely it will not. <laughs> That's not a big tragedy though, because OS2 can be quite nicely controlled from the keyboard. Well, evidently, these weird lines you're seeing here, they are simply artifacts. They are not at all visible in real life. So these patterns are just from pixels, filming pixels. In reality, this is super smooth and very beautiful to look at. 
and you see things actually started so what shall we do if we cannot you know operate with a mouse right now because we can't like I, I can press here the button and when I now move the like press the buttons of, of the keyboard which should be controlling the mouse this is going nowhere if I press it again I don't know still going nowhere all right so this is not working right but alt tab is working and now with the arrow keys I can just navigate around to see whatever I want I can again start the enhanced editor if I were so inclined Hey there from the pocket three eighty six, and so we have OS two running. If you want to get to some sort of window menu, you can press Alt Space. Let me maybe just decrease things so you can see my key combinations better all right so alt space gives me here this menu whether i want to move it or minimize or maximize it I haven't tried moving it actually what will happen then yeah then simply with the arrow keys i can decide where i want to position the window and then i press enter and then there it is and alt space again and closing it, do I want to save? No, discard. You see the menus are actually very intuitive, even better than what Windows tells you with the cancel where you just get back and you're not sure what you're doing. So this, this was a nice option to discard things. And now if I wanted to, again, Alt-Tab is going to bring me anywhere I want, like for instance, down there. And I could now say alt D. Or, or just, just move along here with the arrow keys until I reach the shutdown option. If I wanted to before that, maybe close that window again, alt tap, alt space, and then close, and then alt space and close. So you see, I can close everything just nicely, alt tab, and then here, uh, where are you? Come on, shut down. And then I press enter. And then I can, I could actually do that. But before I shut down, I want to show you something. Here, you are having a command line, which is very much like the command line window in, in modern windows. And the usual suspects of MS-DOS are perfectly working here. So if OS2 is in some way foreign to you, then you can always just take recourse to the DOS shell and try to handle things there. But now for real, shut down. Let's see how long it takes. Yes, I'm sure. Boom, that was fast. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for having joined today. If you are not subscribers yet, please consider joining our friendly community. I hope you enjoyed this video and until we meet again, I hope you'll be having a wonderful time. See you hopefully soon. And from me, goodbye.